Hi everyone, this is part two to the PHP contact form tutorial. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to simply send an email through your website using a pretty ugly looking form. And in this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to do a couple of things that you might want to utilize on your own form just to complete the whole process. Um, and they are pretty important things. Obviously the look and feel of the actual form um, and mainly validation so that you can control what fields are required and what aren't. And also the last thing would be to make sure that the send.php uh, file can't be accessed unless it's the form is actually filled out. So the first thing we'll do is the validation. Now there are three ways to validate uh, your form and there are three levels of validation. The first one would be to use the built-in functionality of most modern web browsers. And that would be to just add required to the end of each field. And by adding required to the end of each field, the, the browser is doing a lot of the, well, doing some of the validation work for you. So if you type in, type in a name there um, and hit send mail, it's actually going to tell you, you need to, you need to fill out, fill out your email and you need to fill out your message. So until you fill all of that out, it's not going to send. So that's one way you can do your validation, which doesn't hurt to do. And if you, you want a quick way to do it, just do it like that. And that's your browser function, uh, browser validation. But you also want a way to do it on the server. Now, the server needs that validation because if people can bypass browser validation. Now, what you want to do uh, to do it on the server is go into your send.php. And we're basically going to filter the validation uh, filter the the post information that comes through and if it doesn't exist then we'll send the user back to the the form to do that as you can see we've already created a variable called name so what we want to do is we want to do if uh, empty name so if the name variable is empty we want to send the user back to the index.php file or page and put no user in the uh, URL and exit the script. And then we need to take this honeypot and just take it down there so that it uh, only doesn't run the sending of the email. So let's just create this validation. Okay, and we'll do the same for phone. And we'll just put no phone. And then the next one we will do email, no email. And the last one would be no message. And then message up here as well. So we've got the four fields validated now. So if we go back to our page, and we try and refresh it, you'll notice that the first one will say no user because we haven't filled that out yet, and then no phone. So it's going to take us back. And the, the tough thing about this is that you will lose your data from the first submission. So uh, th this is really just a, a, a raw way to do validation. But as you can see, it does work, but it's not the best way, but it's always good to have that in place. So keep that in place. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to use jQuery to validate the form before the person sends it to the server. Now to do that, I would recommend a script called jQuery validation. If you go onto Google and you search for it, it's called jQuery validation plugin. And we can probably get it off a CDN just to just so we don't have to download and install it. Um, here's one here, jQuery validation CDN. Okay, um, you know what? I'm actually going to download it. So we'll go to jQuery validation website and we will go to download. And it's located here, so let's just download it there.
now that it's downloaded we just open it up in um, in WinZip or WinRAR just go to our dist, the dist folder and grab jQuery validate so let's create a new folder in our project called JS and just drag and drop that into there so now we have jQuery validate if we go into our project now and we include that at the bottom so script source equals JS jQuery validate dot J uh, what is it is it here we go we'll just copy it okay jQuery validate or min.js and we also need a a jQuery setup on here so let's go to CDN jQuery now CDN is just it's stored online for us to download and use easily so I'm just going to grab uh, 1.12.4 and I'm just getting an older version just so there's no compatibility issues and we'll just put that above jQuery validate okay now if we go back to our form and we look inspect it there shouldn't be any JavaScript errors because we have jQuery and jQuery validate is underneath it so that's good now if we go to the jQuery validation plugin page and go to documentation it's going to explain to us how we can make it work on a uh, on our form now as you can see on this example here there's a form and there's a little thing called a little script here to run the validation so what we're going to do is go back to our form we're going to give our form an ID we'll just call it uh, contact us okay I'm going to go and grab this little script here and put it underneath the other scripts and we'll call the contact us form through that okay and then we want to add required to each of our fields and we'll go back to our form now so now if we if we don't fill anything out they all come back this field is required uh, if I fill that out and then that won't be validated but the rest will so as you can see it's very straightforward and this is your browser doing it so it's not even going to the server yet it's not hitting the server until you fill out all of the information so I'm going to type some information in here hit submit and that form is going to send now one little thing I have changed here that I would like you to change as well is as you can see here we have if is set with an exclamation mark so if it isn't set we want to change that to just if empty okay so basically if phone 2 is empty the honeypot will, will not trap the message and the mail will send okay so that will fix that so let's go back let's fill it out hit send email Now obviously the PHP script is validated as well but if I miss that as you can see it's validating now now that's validation out of the way now let's pretty up this form to make it a bit nicer we just need to get bootstrap so if we go on to Google and we look for bootstrap 4 find it on Google here and we'll click on download bootstrap and we'll just copy this data here that will basically allow us to run bootstrap quite fast just paste it in there and move the JavaScript underneath jQuery here if we refresh the page you'll notice things will look slightly different already it looks a bit better now but let's pretty up even more let's add a wrapping container around the form and if we refresh it it will look a bit better let's put a title so contact us and then underneath we'll put 
fill out the below form to contact us and save that and then add a class to each field so the class in bootstrap is form control so we'll just copy that and paste that in and for the button we want to I actually added it before I'm sorry but that's the what class you want to use class equals button button success and save that and refresh it and it looks a bit nicer now We then want to maybe make the form a bit bit smaller. It's a bit wide there. So what you could do is in here, surrounding the form, let's do uh, div class equals col lg5, uh, 6, pu push lg3. So we're basically going to make the, the container six columns and we're going to push it three from the left which will center it so that's the form now nice and centered there and as you can see it hasn't centered the text so let's put the text inside that container as well okay and let's just do a let's just add an internal style sheet And we'll just create a file called style.css and we'll just do body padding top 10 vh it'll just make a bit of padding at the top there we go so that that makes it look much nicer we try and send an email it says this field is required now if we right click on this field is required you'll notice it's got a class called uh, email error uh, or it's got a class called error. So what we'll do is we'll actually do a class called error. So error background red oops padding uh, 5px and 20px and we'll refresh it now and if we do send email now that looks absolutely disgusting. I don't know what happened there and I'm sorry about that. Um, We'll give that a color of white and let me just have a look at this. Uh, I'll just take away that style and we'll send it again and we'll just make sure that I've got the correct one. So it's actually a label. So what we want to do is label dot error and refresh it. There we go maybe make it a bit less high and we'll give it display equals block so that it's the full width of the form there we go maybe give the uh, button uh, make it have a cursor so now it has a cursor when you go over it and if they don't fill it out, it actually has red underneath. And maybe we can make the, the form field actually have a border of red around it. So we can do this. We can do input dot error border 2px solid red. So now when it's not filled out, the actual fields go red as well, as you can see. Uh, and also do that with the text area as well. So we can do text area dot error. Save that. Try and fill it out. And as you can see, all of it goes red. So let's try it now. So Sean, whatever my phone number is, email address and uh, message and send email. It's doing something in the background. Thank you for your email. We'll be in touch soon, which is great. Now, if we try and access send.php, you'll notice that you can't do anything because it's actually validating the first validation, which it knows that there's no user being entered or posted, so it diverts the user back to the form page. And that's it. 
I hope that uh, gives you more of an insight on how to make the form even better than what it was when we did the first tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, just comment below, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, small tutorial. Thank you.